Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is called Life Like Secret Voices. Let's pray. Father, I bless you and I praise you, Lord Jesus, for, for what you're about to do today and for what you're about to speak today. Lord God, I just thank you and say that greatly is your name, God, and greatly to be praised. Um, Lord God, I just fill me with words that you would have me say. I have my plans, but your plans are greater, Father. Speak to me, speak through me, and touch every life today. Let not a soul that hear that hears this sermon today not be touched in some way. In the name of Jesus, speak to me and speak through me in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, today's sermon is called Life Like Secret Voices. Um, okay, I got this sermon title because uh, I've been listening to uh, the Secret Voices game on CHFI. For those of you who don't know what it is, CHFI is a radio station in Toronto where I live, and they've been having for the past, oh, I guess year and a bit, different, different rounds of Secret Voices. And what's what the Secret Voices game is, basically they have a catchphrase that says, a t their radio station tagline that says, CHFI Toronto's Perfect Music Mix. And what um, Secret Voices is, is they have a recording of five celebrities saying that phrase. So one celebrity will say uh, Toronto's, one celebrity's, no, one celebrity would say CHFI, one celebrity would say Toronto's, one celebrity would say perfect, one celebrity would say music, one celebrity would say mix. And you have to guess who is saying what, and you have to put it in the right order. So basically they've had two they've had two rounds of this. And then oh what I forgot to say is for every wrong guess that they have for people guessing, the amount of money goes up. So so let's say you start with a thousand dollars. If you get the get the five guesses wrong, you get if you get all five guesses, you get the a thousand dollars. And then if you get one, if you unlock one, let's say you get fifty dollars or something. And this is a much lower amount of money than it really is in the game. Be and for every wrong guess, you get um, you get your secret your your wrong guess gets added to CHFI. And for every right guess, my Every wrong guess, money gets added. So let's say if the, the person calls and they get get the guesses wrong. Money, for the next person, money gets added to the total so that, so that the next person gets more and more money. And this round of secret voices, oh my gosh, is at... At 
$1,103, I think, or or seven fifty. It's a crazy amount of money now. Where where if they get all five guesses, they get that money. But even if they get a wrong guess, money gets added to their total. And then I was thinking of this in relation to life. Um, I was thinking that even when we get, when we make mistakes or when we do things, we may not get everything we want. We, want. we may not get all five voices. We may not get, we may not get everything we want. But even if we get some of the voices, we get something. And if you don't get any of the, get any of the voices, something gets at, even if you don't get what you want or some of what you want, whatever happens in your life, something gets added, whether it's a wisdom, a lesson, something. And the Lord wants me to tell you, don't um, cast off something because it's not exactly what you want. Because it someday is leading you to what you want or it's giving you something in your bank to use for later. It's giving you something in your wisdom, in your knowledge, in your understanding to use for later. So every mistake is adding to your total. Like in every lesson, it's adding to your tools for life. So even if you get it wrong, that your life circumstances are being added to work out something for good. And I was thinking of that secret voices game uh, and all the wrong guesses of the people and to say that even if they guess wrong, they help the next person um, by adding more money to the total. And um, that's what happens in life, that even if we get it wrong, we add wisdom, we add knowledge, we add understanding to our total. And I think that um, every mistake that we, that we go through, every challenge that we go through either adds something to us or we learn something from it. And the question I have now in my life is, what am I learning from the mistakes, the challenges in my life? Let's just not say, oh, it was a mistake, or, you know, I shouldn't have done that, or I'm so stupid. But what, what did you learn from that? What was God trying to teach you from that? Because I believe that every lesson is trying to teach you something. Every, no, every challenge, every mistake is trying to teach you something. Or you're meant to get something out of it. So, even though it's, your life is not how you wanted it to be or want it to be, Instead of saying, oh, my life sucks, or it, this thing didn't turn out uh, the way it should be, the question should be, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What, voice, what voices are you trying to uncover? And who, like, who am I supposed to bless with this? 
because sometimes our trials are not for us. They're for other people. And we've got to understand that um, when we go through trials, it it's, it's a lesson that I keep saying. And the thing about the secret voices thing is, um, when they play the clip every time, it goes by so fast, and they can miss it. And whoever's calling can miss it if they're not paying attention. And sometimes, sometimes the vo the uh, lessons in life or the secrets in life go by so fast in a blink that we're not really paying attention. And then we just say, oh, that was weird or whatever. But we don't really stop, stop, stop to listen to the voice of God and understand what he's actually trying to teach us. We're too busy going, going, um, going through the next thing. And the Lord's saying, live in the moment, but I don't mean live in the moment as in have fun and do what you want. Not the way, not the way other people mean it. I mean live in the moment, meaning absorb those moments. Because every moment of your life, whether you're at work or whether you're at school, is meant to teach you something. Like every moment in your life, every time in your history is meant to teach you something. So don't let it go by, like, oh, that was just weird or whatever, that was just a thing. No, the Lord is trying to teach you a lesson. What is he trying to teach you? And that's, that's what he wants you to understand. He's saying, wake up, I'm trying to teach you something. And you see, I think that's where the world has gotten it wrong. That the, the Lord is trying to teach us so many things about the world and about ourselves. But we've become so much about me and much about what is going on with me and what is going on in my life. That we neglect to see what the Lord is trying to teach us. And we neglect to um, uncover the secrets of, of our lives because they go by so fast or the hidden gems of our lives because they go by so fast we miss them. The Lord, the Lord is really saying to me today, stop. What is this trying to teach you? Stop uh, fussing, stop cursing, stop saying, why me? Stop crying. What is this trying to teach you? What Or what is this moment trying to bring out of you? What goodness is it trying to bring out of you? What strength is it trying to bring out of you? What joy is it trying to bring out of you? Because moments come to teach us something or they come to bring out something. And the Lord is saying, you're not asking, you're asking why me, but you're not asking what is this come to teach me or what has it come to bring out of me? Because Nothing brings uh, something out of you like trouble. Nothing makes you fall to your knees like trouble. Nothing makes you pray like trouble. And the Lord is saying, I need you to ask, what is this trying to bring out of you? And what is this moment trying to do for you? Stop looking at your challenges and your um, 
and your mistakes as bad things and look at them as as fuel and lessons that God is um, trying to teach you and fuel and fuel that God is trying to um, use to bring you to your next level. And I think that um, we're, we tend to be so focused on the next on the next moment, although God is trying to be, bring us to our next level, and although those tools are for the next level, they're also for this level. And and if you can't appreciate the tools that God has given you here, he can't bless you with more. You're asking for more, you're asking for this. But he's saying, are you prepared for it? Or do you just want it because everyone else has it? And I think that, um, that we just, sometimes we want stuff without even knowing why we want stuff. We want stuff because it's kind of cool to have it or it's kind of do cool to do that business or whatever. And for us, it's not what God wants for us. It's what we want for ourselves. So we keep striving for things that God is not in. A good idea is not always a God idea. I'll say that again. A good idea is not always a God idea. And sometimes you have been caught up in a good idea make, trying to make it happen and wondering why is not this moving? It's not moving because you're a child of God but it's not a God idea. You're trying to make it on your own. God is not obligated to help you with anything he hasn't ordained. God is not obligated to help you with anything he is not ordained. On the flip side of that, he is obligated and he does want to, to be with you in things that he has ordained. Um, let me clarify. He's always with you, but when you are doing something that he has not ordained, he, he will not help you with that particular thing, although he'll be with you, but but that particular thing will seem heavy. And sometimes when he ordains it, it'll seem heavy too, but the difference is you'll be able to do it. When it's something he's not ordained, it will be too heavy and you won't be able to do it. When it's something he has ordained and it does get heavy, you will be able to do it. He will give you strategies to overcome whatever. But if it's something he has not ordained, um, he won't give you strategies and you'll be struggling for, for stuff because someone else has it and you've got to understand that your road is not designed to be someone else's road not all roads are paved the same way and we see some stuff on instagram we, we uh, in my case here preachers preach or hear other songwriters write or see other novelists, right? And we're like, I want to do it like that. But God hasn't designed you to do it like that. You may, I said this before, but you may be in the same industry, but called to do it in a different way. And do not be afraid to be different. Do not be afraid to be different. 
Do not be afraid to be criticized. Do not be afraid to be who God has made you to be. Because who God has made you to be is, is not only for you, but for somebody else. And I think that sometimes we're, we live in a culture where we take pictures of our accomplishments and want other people to applaud us. But sometimes when you work in the trenches, people don't applaud right away. And he's saying, don't do things for applause. Don't do things for views. Don't do things for likes. Do it because I've called you to do it. Do it because I've ordained you to do it. Don't do it for likes. Don't do it for applause. Don't do it for anything like that. Because if you do it for something like that, you'll be working forever. You'll be striving forever. And, and you'll be driven by people's comments or people's lack of likes. Or, or I won't do this because not people didn't like it. And that is dangerous because... Um, when you do it because of people, not, not, when you base yourself, sorry, when you base yourself on whether people like it or, or not, you just get to be driven by people. And this is dangerous, especially when it comes to preaching. I found myself um, a few years ago, constantly checking the YouTube views, constantly checking how many likes I got, and, and a few years ago, God said, stop, stop, who are you doing this for? Are you doing it for likes and views? Are you doing it because I've called you to and ordained you to? If people like it, that's great. But if people don't like it, you still have to move forward because there is somebody out there that needs my word the way you preach it. They don't need it the way T.D. Jakes does it. They don't need it the way Stephen Furtick does it. They don't need it the way those other preachers do it. They need it the way that you do it. And there is... Yes, you can, you can take tips from people all the time, but mix those tips with what you do to make, make it you and not them. You, you're a great person by yourself. You don't, you can take tips and mentorship, but you, but along with those tips and mentorship, remember to be yourself. And those tips and books and mentorship can make you, um, can give you tips on how to project, on how to study and whatever. Um, but they can't make you you. You were born as a unique as a unique specimen of God, wherever you wherever you sit, you you were born as a unique specimen of God, and celebrate that uniqueness. The world is strange. <laughs> it, on one hand, you're saying the world is saying, "Be unique, be yourself, be whatever." You were born this way, woohoo! And on the other hand, they're saying, "Copy me, copy this." And you, you, you see a bunch of people copying certain things. Um, I'm about to be thirty-eight in in a few weeks, so I remember when Voice to Men came out. And then, Voice of Men worked so well, they were, they were abandoned 
Philly and they started high school and they made it big. After they met Kenneth, Kenneth Babyface Edmonds, he heard them and they made it big. So, after that, the Backstreet Boys came out and then they made it big. The Insync came out. And then the boy band craze of the uh, mid-90s, early 2000s started, like, because it just started, people started copying and copying and copying until it got old, like you were saying, oh, another boy band. And they were all, they were all different in, in their ways, but it was all, um, mostly, it was a formula with a few differences. It was a formula, and, um, people are not des designed to be a formula forever. And sometimes, um, people... A formula works for one person because they're ordained for that. But you are not ordained to fit a mold or be somebody's formula. You are ordained to be unique. You are ordained to be different. You are ordained to be um, specifically tailored to what you have to offer your gifting and as I said before you could you could read books you could take courses you can get better at your craft you can study to show yourself approved but at the end of the day be a unique individual you've got enough you are enough you have enough to do exactly what God has envisioned you to do there are a there are a lot of times when we when we think we don't have enough, but that's the devil's voice. That's not God's voice, and God wants to you to uncover the secrets in you. Going back to secret voices, um, each and every one of those celebrities saying that phrase. They only say one word, and then they move on to the next celebrity. Sometimes God will only speak literally one word. He will speak go. He will speak move. He will speak um, only one word, or he will give you one verse. He will give you one phrase um, and he's calling you now to move on it he's been speaking to somebody for ages and he's saying you're asking me to speak to you but you know I have been speaking to you and you know what I called you to do so move on it and you're like God, I don't feel you with me, but he's saying, um, just because you don't feel me with you, doesn't mean I'm not with you. It only means that I trust you, because you've grown up. Uh, last week, um, I was, I was, I was in church, and the pastor uh, was talking, um, showed a video of one of his sons, um, as a baby, and his wife was behind, uh, out of the camera saying, come on, come on, come on now, walk, come on, come on, come to mommy, and you would see him taking steps. And him, and the mom said, "Yay, yay!" And then 
and then he flashed back back to the service and had that same um his son the same boy who is now 15 soon to be 15 um walk on the stage and like he said see like he walked on the stage and nobody was um calling his name nobody was saying yay you walked yay good because why is that because he's not a baby anymore because he's not six months anymore he's 15 years so by that time he's walked several steps already nobody cheering for you when you walk several steps already but I'm telling you if I got up and started walk, walking uh, which could happen one day I still believe that um, people would be up on their feet it would be worldwide news when you've done things over and over, most times the cheer of the crowd dies down. And when the cheer of the crowd dies down, because you're so, uh, because you've done stuff over and over, it's actually a compliment. It's actually because People expect you to be great, so they're not saying, yay, this anymore, because they're so used to you doing that. And sometimes one of the hardest things to do is to do do something uh, without the cheer of the people and to keep going. And the Lord is saying now, keep going. Keep plugging. Don't stop. It doesn't matter if people see you. It doesn't matter if the views are low. It doesn't matter what's going on. Just know that I see you and I'm proud of you. And the reason you don't hear me, me the reason you don't hear me cheering for you is two things. Number one is I'm working all things good. Number two is, I trust you, uh, I trust you, I trust you, know that I'm here for you, and I've got you back, got your back, and there's no greater compliment uh, than, than the Lord saying, I trust you, I trust you, know that you've got this. And that I'm behind you, I'm around you, just listen to my voice. And it it was it was just so amazing because last week, um, as an illustration, the pastor got behind his son and just started directing him different places and it, it was just so awesome. So, kind of the voices in our lives, not only God's voice, but sometimes the voice of those around us that we trust. Like for me, it's my mom and maybe my friend Sarah um, and my uh, other family members and friends. They may be the secret voices in my life. The first voice we have to listen to is the voice of God. Um, he's directing us, he's moving us, he's guiding us. But, but the second thing too is he works through people. And sometimes he places people's voices in our lives to help guide and direct us too. And I'm not talking about naysayers that bring you down or whatever. 
I'm talking about people who know you and love you. Sometimes they give constructive criticism, and sometimes they can give guidance, and sometimes we have to listen uh, to the secret voices in our lives, uh, the voices that God has put in our lives uh, to to guide us and to help us. And the Lord is the Lord is un uncovering joy today. The Lord is covering peace today. All those things you think have been hidden are now being uncovered and he wants you to know that all of these things will be added to you if you just go. He's saying, I need you. He said, I know you're scared. I know this is a new chapter for you. I know this is a health scare for you. I know this is a new job for you. But just move and trust that I've got you. And listen to my voice and the, the voice of those around you. And even if you make a mistake, those mistakes are being added to your to your total lessons for the next level, and they will be um, they will be useful at your next level, like the secret voices game. Every wrong guess, the total goes up. So every mistake, the total and the tools and the wisdom and the knowledge you learn, it goes up. So even the mistakes in your life are worthwhile. And he wants me to, to tell you to move forward and listen to his voice. And listen to uh, the voices of those who trust, around, who you trust around you. And you can say, Rachel, how do I listen to his voice? How do I know what his voice sounds like? Is it audible? Is it, you know, is it a knowing? Is it a feeling? Is what, what, what is it? I would say to find your rhythm. The thing with God is I think that he talks to his children differently. Everybody with children will know that the children can come from the same two parents and be very different. And you can hear, you could hear um, one child say something else and the other child respond totally differently to that same thing. Um, and I think that, that you could get lots of books about hearing from God or how to hear from God or how to hear from the Holy Spirit. But what I think is there's no uh, one size fits all. I think knowing the voice of God in your life and how he speaks to you is about spending time with God and finding your rhythm with God. And Eve, like, cause even just the little things in your life, he will speak to you about the little little things in your life. And he will speak to you in a way that fits your life, that fits your uh, doing, that fits your knowing. And he will tell you what you need to know. I think most, some things are given for everybody, but I think that most, that most things are individual. God um, does things individually for individual people. So one one alcoholic can see a drink 
and it sends them into a tailspin. Another form of alcohol that can see a drink, and if you can be drinking around them, no problem. See, it's all about how God is working in their life, in their life, in a person's life, and we have to be aware of that. So I would say, hearing the voice of God is <coughs> is about first finding a rhythm with God. And you can say, Rachel, how do I hear the voice of, of people and know that it's God's voice speaking to a person? Well, um, I believe um, that when God, um, God is using the oracle of a person, of a person, he, he first puts a knowing inside you, um, that it is God that is speaking, although it is through your mom. Or, or your dad, or your husband, or your wife. I believe he will put a knowing inside of you that says, Yes, this is from the Lord. This is the Lord. Although it's the voice of my mom, it is from the Lord. There's been several times where the Lord's been speaking to me through my mom. And it's... And it's been awesome. Um, the Lord will not leave you without direction. The Lord will not leave you, period. And he will not leave you without direction. He wants me to tell you that he will not leave you without direction. So... Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. But see you next week. Or as my Google would say, see you on the flip side. <laughs> Bye. Speak Lord, speak Lord, speak Lord, speak Lord. Some of you are saying that, and the Lord has just said to me, I am speaking, but are you listening? He said, I am speaking, but are you listening? Speak Lord, speak Lord, speak Lord, speak Lord. And as I said before, he speaks through different ways. And, and it's up to you, it's up to you to get into a rhythm with him so that you know how he speaks to you. And there are a couple ways to do this, I think. Um, just by writing down everything that you think he's saying and measuring it against his word. Although God will use different means of speaking, he will never go outside his word. So even if it's just a seed, some, some part of what he's saying will be in his word, which is the Bible. So get to know his word and you'll get to know at least the start of his voice. And outside of his word, get a book with a pen and write down everything that you think he's speaking to you and ask him, did you say this, Lord? And he'll confirm his word. And sometimes he won't confirm his word. 
depending on what he wants to do in your life. Sometimes he he will confirm your word, his word, and sometimes he won't, because he wants you to go forward in faith. I'm saying, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And then, in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me today.